Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. My name is James and in this video, we're going to look into A-Level Computer Science Chapter 7, Monitoring and Control System. So this is the chapter outline. Let's look into what a monitoring system does. It's a tool that continuously observes and tracks the performance of various components. The keyword is continuously. It keeps doing it. Providing real-time data and alerts for proactive management and problem solution. And this is the structure of a monitoring system. It consists of sensors. So these are the different types of sensors available. And then the sensor will send data to the microprocessor to be processed. And if they found an abnormality, this system will send a warning to the user of the system. So let me give you some example of where you can find a monitoring system. The home security monitoring system, it has motion sensor, security camera, sending data to the microprocessor, and then sound an alarm if they detect any motion or breach of a window slash door. Example number two, industrial temperature monitoring system. Uh, thermocouples, a sensor that senses temperature, send data to the computer, and then if it detects a temperature outside the range, it will pro provide a warning, and then the worker will then turn off the equipment. So the third example, hospital patient monitoring system um, incorporates a variety of sensors like ECG for heart activity, pulse oximeter for blood oxygen level, blood pressure cuff for blood pressure. So all this data will be sent again to the microprocessor. If an unacceptable value is received, the system will send a warning to the doctors and the nurses so that they can do something about it to help the patient. But if you look into all these examples so far, what they do is that they will only give you a warning, but they don't really do something. In this example, the, the system here, they don't actually help the patient. They're just providing a warning for the doctors and nurses. This is why monitoring uh, control system comes in. They are basically everything about monitoring system, but then they have the capability to control a system. And the only difference in terms of structure is that they have an actuator. So this actuator is a mechanical or electronic device that is responsible for converting a control signal into a physical action of movement, often used to adjust or manipulate the system or its component. So let me show you the schematic diagram to show you how co control system actually work. So for example, the sensor will sense data and this data will be sent to the analog to digital converter. This is required because the computer can only understand binary. They can't read a value like 37. So I'm converting. The ADC will convert this value into binary, send it to the processor. And once they process it, they will send another digital control signal back to the DAC to convert it to analog converter. And this analog control signal will be sent to the actuator. So this is um, the three step in action. If there's anything that happens out of range, they will send a signal to the actuator to do something. So let's say in this example, it's 37 degree, it's too hot, then the actuator might you know, turn on the aircon. So this subsequent time measurement, the subsequent time measurement will occur after the execution of this contraction. So after the actuator do something, does something, um, the sensor will take in another value another feedback to see whether the actuator has solved the problem. Otherwise, it will just instruct the actuator to do a different thing, maybe. Um, this entire thing is what we call a closed loop feedback system because it senses, it senses the value. And if anything happened, the actuator do something about it. And then it senses another value to see whether it has solved the problem. And it goes on and on and on and on. Let me give you some example of what, where you can find a control system. Um, thermostat in a he home heating system um, measure the temperature. If it falls below the set point, the thermostat sends a signal to the heating system to increase the heat output. Again, you can see that that's the difference between a control system and a monitoring system. They actually do something about it instead of just providing a warning. The next one is the automotive cruise control system. They measure the speed. If it deviates from the set cruise speed, the system address the throttle or brake to bring the speed back to the desired level. Last example, blood glucose monitoring system. So instead of just measuring the temperature, they also measure 
the glucose level. And if the glucose level is outside the desired range, it, it can get too high. Then this system will administer insulin, which is a medicine to lower down your blood glucose level. So this is just another example for a control system. But what is actually happening behind the hood, right? Or like binary, um, what is happening inside this microprocessor? Um, this is when bit manipulation comes in. You will learn what are the different ways we can use assembly language to change the bit inside a microprocessor. Um, these are some of the ways that we'll be changing the bits in the processor, setting all the bits to zero, toggle the value of just one bit, setting a bit to one regardless of its current value, setting all bits to zero except one bit which is of interest. And in the next part of the video, I will show you when will this scenario happen. So patient with me. So let's do the first one. How do we set all the bits inside a system to zero? So let's say in location 17, I want to restart it. I want to set everything to zero. So I'm going to write an assembly code, load everything that is inside 17 to my ACC. And the second step is the essence of it. I apply a bitwise and operator. And what it does is that it will compare the two digit for each bit and then apply a an operator to it. If you remember what we talked about in chapter five, an end operator will only give you a result of one when both bits are one. So in this case, because I'm using all zero as my operand, I can set all my bits to zero. And once this is done, um, I will store all the result in ACC back to location 17. So this is how we set all the bits to zero. We use an end bitwise operator and put zero as all zero as our operand. So the second scenario is when you want to toggle off value of just one bit. In, for example, here in location 18, I want to change this bit to from one to zero. So um, it can also be like a flex that symbol that I want to change. So what I'm going to do is first, again, load everything in location 18 to the accumulator and then apply a bitwise XOR operator. An XOR operator will only give you a result of one when either one of the bits is one. So you can see the magic here. Once you apply the XR operator with the operand set to 0001, I mean, because this, the rightmost bit is the bit that I want to toggle. So this is why I set this bit to one. So if you want to toggle the fourth bit, then you have to set the fourth bit to one. But what happened is that after this operation, you can see that one here will become zero. That's um, what I want to do. And everything else, remain unchanged. So by using this operation, XOR operation, I can toggle just one bit that I want to care about. And then after that, I would again store the value back to the location 18. So this is how you toggle the value of one bit. You use an XOR operator. So setting a bit to one regardless of its current value, useful to report a condition. So 19, let's say I want to set this value to one. I mean, regardless of whether it's one or zero, I just want it to be one. So I will use an all bitwise all operator. Again, I only set the bit I want to change to one. So you can see that if um, I'm using an all operator, if this is zero, zero or one will still give me one. But then if it's a one, one or one, it will also give me one. So by using an all operator, I can set the value of a bit to one, regardless of what value it has. So this is um, what happened. If you want to set a bit to one, regardless of its current value, use an all operator. I believe we still have one more. Setting all bits to zero, except one bit, which is of interest. So let's say I want to set um, the second bit of um, binary in location 20 to zero. I mean, sorry, to one. Sorry, and I, actually I should set all bits to zero, except this bit. I will then use an N operator, but then the mercy is that I will put the second bit here as one. All right. And then you can see that all the bits will have been changed to zero, except the bit that I put one at. Now I saw the value back to my accumulator. Great. So that's the fourth scenario, which we need to change a bit. So let's look into some work example. Um, some of the exam question that will be required to solve. Um, they're going to show you a byte and then ask you what operator should you use to achieve the desired result. In this case, I have a register that has eight bits. 
So the first four bits can be a flag for census to indicate a problem, and the next four bits could be a flag for actuator to know whether to take action. So the first question, all of the bit needs to set to zero. What logical bitwise operation and what operand is required? As we learned just now, to set every bit to zero, you just use an AND operator and then put the operand as all zero. And you would have gotten zero, zero, zero as the result. So the bitwise operation selected is N and the operand is zero. Second example, a sensor has recorded value that's too high. So bit number three here must be set to one, but other bits must remain unaltered. State which logical bitwise operation plus operand is required. So I only want to change this. I want to make everything um, unchanged. Um, to do that, like what we learned just now, we use an OR operator, um, OR to change this from 0 to 1. And then the other thing, because I'm putting an OPER operator with operand 0, the other bits will not get affected at all. So the operation I choose is OR, and the operand I choose is um, this one. Because I'm changing the third bit, so I'm only leaving the third bit as 1. Last example, bit 1 and bit number 8 need to toggle due to a misreading. State which logical bitwise operation plus operand is needed. To toggle a bit, we use the XOR operator um, and then put the operand as 1 at the location which we want to toggle. So after this operation, you, you should see that 1 here has become 0 and 0 here has become 1. But for the other thing, it just remains unchanged. So the bitwise operation is the XOR gate and the operand is 1 at the site, at the location which I want to toggle. So that's just some examples to help you understand. I hope this video has helped. It's a relatively shorter video. Let me know in the comment section how, um, if you have any um, thing that you don't understand. And thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.